Good afternoon, Year 7. So, this week we will be finishing off our study on Beowulf by looking at whether or not we consider the character of Beowulf as an epic hero or not. So, first, what is a hero? Which leads us to this idea of archetypes. Now, Archetypes are very similar to stereotypes, which you may have heard of. So we've got these stereotypical characters that come up over and over again in works of literature or film or anything along those lines. So these common stereotypes are often known as being archetypes. There are several categories of archetypes, such as setting or character settings, which might come up a lot of the time, such as a haunted house in a horror setting, um, or characters. They're really helpful when you're writing a story to include characters that fit into these archetypes to some extent, as they really help the reader quickly understand what a character or setting is like because of their role in the story. So we're going to start, your starter for today is going to be looking at some common archetypal characters in literature, such as a hero, a villain, damsel in distress, a mentor, and a mother. Bear in mind, this mother doesn't have to be the literal mother. It could be somebody who is just caring and nurturing. So for each of these characters above, I'd like you to list five characters in film or literature which you think would fit into that category. I've done a couple for you, but I'd like you to put your own in. So, for example, a hero might be somebody like Superman, Odysseus, or Harry Potter, and villains might be somebody more like Lord Voldemort. When it comes to a damsel in distress, a damsel is a, another term for a maid, so you might think of Disney for this, Rapunzel, lost in, stuck in her tower, or Sleeping Beauty, waiting to be rescued. You have a mentor. Or a wise teacher. Again, this can be either a male or female character. A nice example of this would be Dumbledore. His role is to help the hero through the story and the troubles of it. And then with the mother, any that you may know, any maternal characters, caring characters. I'm thinking uh, Mrs. Weasley, that sort of character. Again, linking it to Harry Potter If um, there, but... You can come up with your own ones. So, a hero is often a type of protagonist. A protagonist is the fancy word or the literary term for a main character that the story is centered around. Can you please write these down in your book? On the other hand, we also have an antagonist, the character who causes problems for the protagonist, usually the villain. And we've got a final definition an epic or an epic poem. Beowulf is, is an example of an epic poem, which is a long poem, typically one which comes from ancient oral tradition, which is spoken word rather than writing down, narrating the deeds and adventures of heroic or legendary figures or the past history of a nation. In this instance, it's about a heroic legendary figure, Beowulf. So, what makes up an epic hero? You don't need to copy this table down or anything along those lines as you will have your own one to put in afterwards. So, some attributes, some features. First, of noble birth, so often a king, a prince or something along those lines. They also will have superhuman capabilities, so they may have significant attributes. They might be a superhuman with one thing that they are very, very, very good at. Or like Beowulf, he might just be super strong and brave. He's able to rip the arm off the Grendel, which a normal human wouldn't be able to do. They're a traveller, so they go to exotic locations. Remember, he was originally a Geet, but he travelled to Denmark to help save the village. An unmatched warrior, a real hero in most stories, has a reputation for being a great, great warrior even before the beginning of the story. They're part of cultural legend, so before they can be known to everyone, like Beowulf is, 
then they're first a legend in their own culture. Next might be humility or would be humility, which is similar to modesty. They perform the deeds for their own sake rather than for the glory. Then, although they may get glory, they don't do it to boast. If they are boastful heroes, then they often in stories will be punished or humbled. And they also will battle supernatural foes or enemies. An example of this would be the Grendel in Beowulf, which we already have seen. Now, what I'd like you to do with this table is the sheet is uploaded to Gopher Schools, and I'd like you to fill in the right hand column, the description for each of the attributes, and apply it to Beowulf. There will be a summary coming up in this PowerPoint, which you can use to help you. And you need to try to fill in, in how is he of noble birth? What superhuman capabilities does he seem to have? What examples of there, are there of him traveling? How is he an unmatched warrior? How is he a legend? Remember that the Danes have already heard of him. So in that regard, he's legendary in his own time. How is he not boastful? So how does he show humility? And what supernatural foes does he battle? If you could fill in that table, that would be your next task. Then, linked to that, what is the difference between an epic hero and a brave warrior? So can you copy down or print off the Venn diagram and fill in some of these on the left, these events on the left, and put them into either the epic hero circle, the warrior circle, or both, if you think that he does something which suits both. For example, he saves the Danes. A warrior could have done that, or a hero could have done that, therefore both. So today we're going to be thinking about the question, to what extent can Beowulf be considered an epic hero? First, you'll need to remind yourself of the plot if you can't remember or you've missed out on some tasks. This is a good way of refreshing your memory. So there is a video which shows the whole um, story. It's only 30 minutes, so if you could please watch that, unless you're very, very, very confident that you know the story inside and out. And there's a summary which will help you. So Beowulf is the story in epic poem form of a great Geat warrior who came to the aid of the Danish king Hrothgar in defeating a monster that was terrorizing his people. The monster, Grendel, was a huge, terrifying creature that would enter the town and tear apart its people. Beowulf took on the monster in a mead hall and defeated him by ripping off Grendel's arm, completing the first of three battles which make up the epic poem. After Grendel's defeat, Grendel's mother goes into a rage and seeks to follow Grendel's path in destroying the Danes. Beowulf then goes to her lair and kills her with a great sword of the old world. Victorious and revered, Beowulf returns home to the Geats and serves as their king for a peaceful 50 years until his people are terrorised by a dragon, enraged by treasure that was stolen from it. Beowulf takes on the dragon in a brave battle and ultimately defeats it. He is mortally wounded and laid to rest at sea, ending his legacy as a warrior and a ruler. It's worth noting that Beowulf, in terms of humility, Beowulf instructs his soldiers not to help and says that he will fight the, the um, dragon on his own. Whether that is a modest and uh, act which shows humility or not, I'm going to leave up to you. Because although it's brave, he did it on his own, it's a bit arrogant, I would say, to tell all of your fellow soldiers who want to help you to just sit back, I've got this. And he goes to fight on his own. Very brave or very foolish? That's up to you. So this is your main task. Beowulf is an epic hero, not just an ordinary warrior. Discuss. So you're going to be writing an article using what you know about Beowulf to give your opinion on the above statement. Is he a hero or is he just a warrior? So you'll need to think about the following questions. Do you think that Beowulf is an epic hero? Why do you think he is or isn't a hero? Is he completely heroic or are there some things he does which aren't? 
when you're structuring this article you will need to include an introduction where you introduce what makes an epic hero this is where you're setting the goalposts almost for the rest of your article what is a hero like then two to five paragraphs introducing Beowulf's deeds and actions and evaluate them to explain how they are or aren't heroic use the table and venn diagram to help you and your conclusion what do you think? Is he or is he not an epic hero? Here is an example. You, I really do recommend reading through this example before you start. It will help you a lot. If you are stuck, you might want to take some of the ideas from this. However, I would really like to see the vast majority of you writing yours completely from scratch. So, in your introduction, Introducing what is an epic hero. Epic heroes are notable, uh, noble characters in a story that often have superhuman qualities. They may possess a noble background, respected by other characters in the story, they perform extraordinary deeds, and protect others from evil. Although most warriors are brave, epic heroes take this further by also setting a good example to others in terms of their nobility and strength of character. Then we get to the main body. Beowulf is an archetypal epic hero who is worthy of respect and emulation like almost copying people want to see him and want to be like him a true epic hero must possess most if not all of these characteristics bravery strength skill honesty compassion intelligence and modesty in the story beowulf is put into painful and challenging situations but rises up to put an end to the people's suffering demonstrating his bravery and compassion beowulf is a fictional character from the anglo-saxon poem entitled Beowulf which was written between the 8th and 11th century. It talks about a young boy who was born in a land where there was chaos and anarchy. Beowulf was a mighty warrior of the Geats. I may swap those paragraphs around actually because this is a little bit more introductory than I would like. In the poem Beowulf's bravest and most heroic acts are killing the three antagonists Grendel, Grendel's mother and the dragon. So he fought all three of these monsters, eventually dying heroically of his wounds after defeating the dragon. Even though he died fighting the dragon, he did so with a view to saving his kingdom, which is brave, brave and heroic. I think he is an epic hero because he showed his bravery and compassion for fighting against the monsters to keep his people safe. Once you've had a go at writing the article, please answer these five questions either in your book or on the computer depending where you're doing the work and include that when you submit your work to your teacher.